This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Landmark College, the college of choice for students who learn differently. Visit lcdistraction.org to learn how Landmark College supports students with ADHD and other learning differences. Find your place at Landmark College. How does a woman with ADHD manage? So it's been pretty um, difficult for me. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to rise above it and pretend that I don't have ADHD, and Mm -hmm. I learned a very difficult lesson that... um, I was born with ADHD, and I will die with ADHD, so a pan- <laughs> pandemic is, is not going to change the way <laughs> I'm managing the kitchen, so I'll give you, I'll give you a rundown uh, of what happened. Hello, and welcome to Distraction. I'm your host, Dr. Ned Hallowell. And I have with me today one of my favorite people in all the world, one of the first people I met when I entered into the world of ADHD, when I discovered I had it myself back in 1981, and uh, began to go to gatherings where people who had this wonderful trait would gather. And one of the most uh, generous, kind, welcoming people I met in one of those first meetings uh, Terry Matlin welcomed me in, and she's been working in the trenches of ADHD ever since, and really uh, is an amazing presence in that world. She's written books, she runs uh, these phenomenal chat rooms that have thousands of women, and um, she's just a wife, a mother, a grandmother now, and very down to earth and very smart but humble and wise, and has been in the world of ADHD uh, longer than I have. And and she's still young, don't worry. (laughs) Well, anyway, so let me welcome Terry Matlin, psychotherapist, writer, consultant, and ADHD coach, with obviously a special focus on women. She offers online group coaching for women at queensofdistraction.com and has a slew of other ADHD websites that we will put in the show notes. She is one busy woman. Thank you for taking the time to join me, Terry, and welcome back to Distraction. Ned, thanks so much for inviting me back, and it's always so much fun to chat with you, and thank you for all the kind words. Well, they're all very, very true. So we're in a special kind of world uh, today, aren't we? This is, this is the world of the pandemic. We're right in the middle of it. I'm in Michigan, and our governor just told us all to not leave our homes unless absolutely necessary for food or medical emergencies. So, yeah, and you're in the Boston area. Um, I don't know if you've gotten the same. Yeah, we've been told to stay at home, absolutely. And all the restaurants are shut down, the movie theaters are shut down. You know, everything that involves entertainment or sports or gyms are are shutting down. Yeah, I mean, it's... uh, a lot less traffic. <laughs> yeah, that's the good part. But tell me what it's like for you. What What is your situation? Well, you know, speaking from the perspective of, uh, as a woman with ADHD, so yes, I have a grandson, but I, I do have two grown young adult daughters, one who has come back home um, during this uh, pandemic to be with us so that we can kind of all stick together and be more cautious of how we live our daily daily lives but i was thinking um when you invited me on for this podcast how does how does the situation affect a woman with adhd and uh, i am online a lot i do most of my work online and and i and i'm seeing very interesting messages from women and men who have the inattentive subtype we don't really get into that too much anymore mm-hmm. but you know what i'm saying so a lot of the inattentive adults are saying well we were born to do this mm-hmm. we love being inside we love being away from social events and people and parties and uh chit chat with our neighbors so for um a large group of us you know this is kind of okay in mm-hmm. terms not looking at the medical dangers of this but dealing dealing with being indoors and and hunkering down but for those who are the more hyperactive impulsive types who get antsy if they have to sit in a chair for more than two minutes this is pretty difficult Mm -hmm. so i was kind of thinking about that when um when you you know invited me in that for a lot of us uh this is tough but beyond that um 
just my own experience of having to cook every day. That's not something I do well, and people who follow my work, I write about it and talk about it a lot. Cooking is not my forte, mainly because it uh, involves so many decisions. Um, (laughs) It means multitasking, planning, (laughs) all the things that most of us with ADHD are not great at doing. Mm -hmm. So here I am now in the kitchen, and I have a husband who eats certain things that my daughter won't eat, and my daughter eats certain things that I'm not wild about. So how Mm -hmm. do you not only put meals on the table every night when we're used to ordering in, how does a woman with ADHD manage? So it's been pretty um, difficult for me. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to rise above it and pretend that I don't have ADHD, and Mm -hmm. I learned a very difficult lesson that... um, I was born with ADHD, and I will die with ADHD, so a pan- <laughs> pandemic is, is not going to change the way <laughs> I'm managing the kitchen, so I'll give you, I'll give you a rundown uh, of what happened. <laughs> I was born so, with it, and I'll die with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So tell so us the, about this, you, Terry, in the kitchen. What? <laughs> so Terry in the kitchen last night, I'll give you an example. Here, my daughter's back home. My husband is not working. He's on lock. We're all on lockdown. Mm-hmm. So I think to myself, well, let's make the best of this. You know, there, there's another piece to this. The women generally try to pull the family together, keep everybody in the right kind of mood, mm-hmm. comfort each other. Mm-hmm. You know, we kind of set the tone. We set the tone for the family. Right. Well, when you're scared out of your mind, like I am, to be <laughs> honest, and depressed a little bit about, well, what's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen? So I put on this, okay, well, we're going to make the best of this. Uh So my daughter's home, and I decide, I know um, that she, like, I'm trying to remember. See, my memory's not so hot either. What did I make last night? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Well, I know I made my husband a a very special kind of salad with all the things he likes. And Uh I'm very proud of myself. I made blue cheese dressing from scratch. Wow. Wow. How about that? Not bottled. Not store-bought, but from scratch. That's what I've learned is it is so easy to make salad dressing. I never knew that. Yeah, so what, did you, what do you do? You take a chunk of blue cheese, and then what? Yep, and sour cream mm-hmm. and milk mm-hmm. and salt and pepper, and mm-hmm. I know I'm missing something. Any vinegar or no? No. No, no. oil? Oh. Now, you know this was last night. Do you think I remember <laughs> anything from last night? I don't remember. Well, you knew how to do it last night. Well, so last night. So then I sliced up all these vegetables. Oh, I remember now. Okay, so yeah. my daughter loves pasta. Uh-huh. So how, how easy is pasta? Okay, yeah. you don't need a recipe to put uh, spaghetti and, and tomato sauce together. But right. normally I do, but I didn't last night. Yeah. So, so you put the, the pasta up for boil. Yeah. You forget that it's boiling because you're on to cutting up vegetables. Right. Then I took out of the freezer um, garlic toast that you just have to stick in the toaster oven. I stick that in the toaster oven. Right. I read the back of the box three times because I can't remember what temperature do you put the, right. the toaster oven on. Right. Do you bake it? Do you broil it? I don't know. <laughs> then as you get older, you can't see. So you look for your reading glasses, right? Yes. Yeah. And I've learned a lesson. I have to get two pair of reading glasses for the kitchen from now on because you're in different corners and you can't find your glasses. So the noodles are boiling. The noodles boil over. Then you rush to the toaster oven. Is it burning? Then you rush to the cups of vegetables. And then I'm making this thing from scratch. And, okay, so in my mind I'm thinking I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. How is it that I can't boil pasta, warm up a, a jar of tomato uh, sauce, uh, right. uh, pasta right. sauce, right. cut vegetables. You know, this is cooking and, 101. And, and toast, garlic toast. And gar- frozen garlic. All I have right. to do is keep an eye on the toaster oven. Right. So it dawned on me that this is an ADHD woman's nightmare. Yes, my God. But, I mean, they all got fed, right? They got fed, but at the cost of my GI system, <laughs> my anxiety. Your self-esteem. Sweat, <laughs> self-esteem, like, what a failure at my age. I'm in my 60s now. I've got a grandchild. How is it that I can't, you know, do something as simple as two very easy meals in the kitchen? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. here's the upside. Yes. got to be an upside. Yes. I talked to my husband. He's known I've had ADHD for over well over 20, 25 years. Right. 
And, and I he's, said, he's by nature a very sweet man. Yes. An orthopedic surgeon When he's in a that. good mood, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he's in a good mood, right. When he's in a good mood. He's yeah. in. So he sees me struggle, and after all these years, he gets it. He gets it. So I said to him, you know, I bought an instant pot. I got it for Christmas, Hanukkah. Two and a half years ago, I've never opened the box because it's intimidating. It is. <laughs> Did you ever see how many buttons are on this thing? Oh, believe me, I've got one. I know. I, 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 I took it on the other day. But tell me your experience. What uh, you what? did? All right. So I said to his name is Jerry. I yeah. said, Jerry, I can't do this every night. Pandemic or no pandemic, I cannot do this every night. <laughs> I can't be We're having a pandemic in my and... kitchen. <laughs> We are having an ADHD mom pandemic in the kitchen. I am overwhelmed. Do you think you could look at this instruction book? Because I've tried. I can't make sense of an instant pot. And I know I'm going to burn myself. <laughs> so the good man took the book. We both watch about five YouTubes on how to make frozen chicken breasts. I think to yeah. myself, that's pretty easy. Yeah. We can't we can't figure it out. <laughs> we couldn't. So a friend of mine said, do this. Take two eggs and just learn how to cook two eggs <laughs> so that you don't destroy a whole dinner. <laughs> well, my husband's a scientist of sorts. He's in the medical field. Sure. He said, nah, nah, I'll figure it out. So he took it upon himself today because he saw how destroyed I was last night. He learned to use the Instant Pot, and he made chicken t for tonight's dinner. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So he, ma he mastered the Instant Pot. He figured out, uh, yeah, yeah, the first the first part of this whole thing. I, he, and, and he's so funny. He said, in all seriousness, he looked at me and he said, I will not saute. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> but you have to. That's part of the deal. Believe me, I, I, my story was I, I tried to make pea soup from scratch with, you know, and and I put it on for 10 minutes and I finished it. The peas were hard as nails. And then oh, I God. tried it again. And on the third time, I managed to push the right button and it oh, turned really? out OK. But holy really? moly. It's an ADD nightmare. You know, they don't make it clear at all. I mean, granted, I'm really dumb when it comes to this stuff, but it was comical. I Fortunately, my expectations of myself are much lower than yours are of you. <laughs> I know I'm going to... But it came it out. Up. It did, finally, after the third try, yes. <laughs> so Jerry got the thing working? He got it working, so now we have one meal we can we can do, or he can do. Good. But I have a question for you, Ned. Here's yeah. a question. Yeah. You're yeah. a man with ADHD. Yes. Everybody yeah. knows that. Yes. And yeah. in a way, it's a blessing for the millions of us that have read your book and learned that it's okay to right. have ADHD. You know, we, right. can, we can live right. with this. Right. right. But as a woman with ADHD, it's these kinds of situations in the kitchen where women are supposed to, because of the society's expectations right. of right. girls and women, to be able to do this with our, uh, our eyes closed. Right. If we don't do it well, or the thing that I just described, it just is such a um, de terrible feeling, of, uh, a real hit to our self-esteem. So yeah. tell me, as a man with ADHD, let's forget the doctor, the author, the right. expert, did that affect your self-esteem as much as what I described? No, not at all. No, no. And, and that's because I don't have those societal ideals. I don't have Martha Stewart looking over my shoulder, you know, uh, at all. You poor women, you've been traumatized by these, you know, all the cooks who are on TV and they make it all look so simple. And I know I'm going to F up. You know, I, I just know that'll happen. And I don't beat myself up for it. I actually laugh at it a little bit. I mean, that's just who I am. And, and I say, look, it's the price I pay for having the gifts I've got. So, oh, okay. you know, I'm, I go easy on myself about that. Now, if I make a big mistake, like I started off with the Instant Pot. This is, this is an <laughs> example. I started off with the Instant Pot, and you're supposed to put some oil in to saute the onions. So uh -huh. I pour the oil into the unit before I put the pot in it. You know, the, the, oh. you, you have a pot that goes on top of the heating unit. 
And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's where you're supposed to pour the oil. But dumb me, I poured it right into the into the <laughs> heating unit. So it got all spilled all over everywhere. And I thought, have I broken it? And, and then I oh did say, God. you stupid. And I used a few choice curse words. And so I, I beat myself up about that. Because that, that was so stupid. I mean, oh, my like, God. It's like, did you turn it on, too? Did you turn it on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You've already made me feel better. I feel 100% better. No, I mean, really, how dumb could I be? And, and you know, and so <laughs> it was the, me with the instant pot, it was like the three stooges, and I was all three stooges in one. I mean, <laughs> pouring the oil oh. into the... I mean, I'm looking right down, and I'm thinking, what is that heating unit? Why am I... And then, and then I've done it. It's too late, you know. It's, Did so, you yes, no, you... Or? But you women, you have this ridiculous ideal that you're supposed to live up to. Uh, well, I mean, men have their different version of it, but the macho thing has been, I think, pretty much discarded. But but I, my heart goes out. You're supposed to be perfect and thin and adept and sympathetic and never flustered and never angry and never demanding and never complaining and all giving and you know, uh, it's absolutely impossible to live up to the societal ideal. And then if you throw ADD into the mix, goodness, it's, it's just a life of shame. But that's where your work is so helpful because, you know, Queens of Distraction, you say, I am who I am, and yes, I flub up, but boy, oh boy, do I do a lot of good. And and I think that's yeah. what... I mean, you well, tell me, what what, I, how do you deal with it? Well, that's that's the thing. So I looked at this whole situation from last night, and I thought to myself, here I am, the expert. You know, women with ADHD, I talk about these scenarios all the time. So I had to rethink and take a pause and say, wait a minute. All right, so you have an ADHD brain. All right, so you're not great with figuring out how to... Um, put together a meal. All right, what can you do? And that's where you have to stop. All right, I can do this. I I do the work I do. I've written two books. I help people. I'm a painter. I'm a musician. I'm this, I'm that. That's where we need to stop ourselves and not let this just drain us of this self-esteem and and continually hearing these messages in our heads. So here's what happened last night. Many of us with ADHD have problems with sleep, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So insomnia, falling asleep is very common, uh, a very common problem. I, I have that myself. Mm-hmm. So as I'm trying, which you're not supposed to try, but as I'm trying to fall asleep, right. I hear my husband's voice. I will not saute. <laughs> 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 and at 130 in the morning, I burst out laughing, and it just... <laughs> it just <laughs> undid all the bad feelings that I was uh, accruing from from the night of cooking. Yeah, that's and I thought, wonderful. This is how it, it has to be. Humor really always does come to the rescue. I mean, it's uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, it, it, it's, uh, so, it, it's so. Can you know, I ask you something again? As yes, a man with ADHD, yeah. take away all all the things that you do and how yeah. you help and all that. Yeah. So I gave you an example of how many women can um, have um, a terrible time with self esteem because things that we're expected to do well, if we can't do it, you know, wow. Right. From a man's perspective with ADHD, what would be an example? Of something we're supposed to do well that oftentimes we have trouble with? Yeah, because you have ADHD, and it, and it affects your self-esteem. Uh, making money. Uh, oh. You know, that's sort of the, the male measuring stick, and uh, I'm not good with money. I give it all away. I, uh, I make it, but I, I, I'm not smart in how I handle it. And as a result, you know, we live uh, month to month. And um, by rights, I should be wealthy. But uh, because I'm really not smart with money, as a result, I'm not. And and I, I do fall prey to the self-esteem trap. You know, I think, well, I'm a guy, I, I should have you know, a few million dollars or whatever. And, and I don't. And so, you know, I feel inadequate. And then I say to myself, don't fall into that trap, and I talk myself out of it. But that's, I think that's something men, uh, they often stupidly uh, measure themselves by how much money they make and feel inadequate to, compared to 
the rich people down the street or what have you. And so that's one area, and, and uh, I, I could think of others. I'm not a very good fisherman. <laughs> Men are supposed yeah, to no, fish. Shame, <laughs> shame, shame, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I admire good fishermen. I have some of my relatives are wonderful fishermen, but I find it boring myself. I could see it would be very boring for a lot of men with ADHD. Yeah, you just yeah. stand there with a pole. And, you know. <laughs> well, what about golf? See, to me, that would be boring. Do you golf? Now, see, I love golf. All right, explain how that is interesting. Please. Well, first of all, it gives me a reason to be out in a beautiful field with my two sons. So, And that's when I do my golfing is with my two boys. And they're now 27, 24. And, but the game itself is ADD heaven. Every After every shot, you get another chance. And oh, no okay. two shots are the same. So you're inventive, you're creative, it's constant, renewed stimulation. Um, and, you know, we kind of like punishment, and no game punishes you more than golf. <laughs> you know, so we're, we're dealing with uh, ongoing frustration, inadequacy, uh, humiliation, and you know, we're right at home with that, you know. <laughs> That's, now, I know you play squash. Now, I used to play squash in my youth, mm-hmm. and that, to me, would be very ADD-friendly. You know, you're... Um, it okay. is. ADD squash is the perfect ADD game. And I've been playing with my friend Peter Metz since 1981. So you do the wow. math. It's a, was that wow. 40 years of squash. And um, I can't do math. You, you do the math. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not ashamed because society says it's okay for women to suck at men. Exactly. Exactly. So you're right. In, you're right. In, you don't want to uh, look too smart. So <laughs> No, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even do the math right. It's 39 years, so there you go. But uh, 39. But we've been playing on Tuesday afternoons for 39 years. Oh, that's wonderful. It is a wonderful thing, and he's, you know, my, my best friend. So I think the message we're both sharing is accept who you are. Don't fall prey to the, to the stereotypes. You, you can't but help fall prey to them a little bit. But mm-hmm. try to puncture them and realize that what we've got going for us is, is much better than these stereotypes you know if you were martha stewart or had her skills would you really uh, feel better about your life i don't think so gosh i wouldn't want to be her for anything no exactly so listen when you told me you were doing this um podcast with me on women i asked a couple women who were online in my groups mm-hmm. if they had any questions for you and, mm-hmm. and could i run a couple by you sure please do yeah okay so one i think that you would uh, really um understand in a, in a deep level so here's a question from a woman. I have a, uh, this is me talking. I'm, mm-hmm. I have a Facebook group of 35,000 women. So this came in from wow. my group. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine 35,000 women from all over the world, which tells me this is still, women need to be, like you say, vitamin C. They need to connect. Yes. They need yes. to have a place where they can open up and, and talk about their vulnerabilities. But anyway, here's the question. Okay. She says, Dr. Hallowell and I belong to the same denomination, Episcopalian. Mm -hmm. Does he have any tricks? I love this question. (laughs) Does he have any tricks to pay attention in church? I often serve either as a... Now, you'll have to help me understand this because I'm I'm Jewish. I often serve either as a LEM or lector Uh or in the choir. Uh I've been an Episcopalian since the cradle. My dad became an Episcopalian priest in midlife, and even on meds, I have a hard time paying attention, much less sitting still through a long sermon. Fortunately, we don't sit the whole time. Do you (laughs) have any any tips? Yes. Well, I I actually am a lector as well when I get to read, but I don't do it, you know, but once a month or something. So that's one way. And uh, another way is our church has been lucky enough to have very... uh, inspiring uh, priests, so the sermons are usually very engaging. Not always, but but usually. And then I do have a third method that is cheating, and I'll admit to it, I'll cop to it. There is a long period before communion where the prayer uh, leading up to communion, it's interminable. And so I have found a way to always need to go to the bathroom during that, which my wife chastises me for, because I'll in the you know the prayer will begin and I'll disappear out the back door off to the bathroom because I, cause sitting through that prayer I mean it I I can't you know boredom is our kryptonite and I just I have to get out the bathroom excuse although my wife sees through it instantly it it does afford me a polite way of leaving 
during the most intensely boring part of the service. Now, it's terrible for me to say that because I should say that's the most holy part of the service, but I'm only human and I can only take what I can take. So that's my <laughs> that's my third method. <laughs> I love this. So how long is a service for your church? Uh, well, it depends, again, on various, but <laughs> <laughs> roughly you know, an hour. You know, you're in the bathroom. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Roughly an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, sometimes Ouch. longer, sometimes less long. Oh, gosh. Okay. But a lot of that is, is fun. Singing is fun. The, we have a beautiful organist and a beautiful choir, and the, the hymns are exciting. I, I love them. And, and, the, and the, the Bible is beautiful, you know, stories, you know, really. So, so I, I, that part I, I like, you know. But now church is canceled, so I can't go. Well, can they go virtual? Well, yes. In fact, I just watched uh, our rector's sermon from Sunday. I watched it, and it was absolutely fantastic. She, she's hmm. amazing. She's she's really. And you really, can move and walk yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can move around and do anything you want to do. Do you have another question? Yep. Okay. So here's one. This is a little tricky. What advice do you have for commitment phobia? I never know how I will feel on any given day, so I don't sign up much. for for in the future. So I think what she means is not relationship commitment, but right. just making a social commitment. Right, right. What if something better comes along? Um, mm -hmm. Sign up and drop out. I mean, you know, nobody's going to shoot you. You don't want to use avoidance as a coping style. It's one of the worst things you can do. So if you're afraid that you're not going to show up and your way of dealing with that is not to sign up, you're using avoidance as a coping style. Much better to sign up and you know you'll feel a little twinge of guilt if you if you if you drop out or don't show up and that's good you should feel a little twinge of guilt but keep yourself committed keep yourself active keep yourself going to things don't use avoidance as a coping style and it's not illegal and or even immoral just say i can't do it today you know I, I, you know so that's okay but to take it to the next step and just not sign up big mistake cuz avoidance leads to isolation and you don't grow, you don't develop, and you know it's a common in the world of ADD because we do flub things up so often that we avoid. That is not the thing to do. It's the kiss of lack of growth. So keep signing up, and if you can't show up or want to drop out, that's fine. So speaking of isolation, and we are right now throughout the world being pretty isolated from each other. Yeah. Any any tips on how to stay connected? The old vitamin C that I love. Hearing you talk about it. Absolutely. It, it, we shouldn't call it uh, social distance. We should call it physical distance because we want to preserve the uh, social connection. And thankfully, we have the, this panoply of, of methods of doing it from voicemail to email to texting to Instagram to Facebook. I mean, you're the maven of it, my gosh. I mean, you've created a global community of women with ADHD. So, you can absolutely be connected and keep your physical distance, which we have to do these days. But like us talking to each other right now, I mean, I feel like I'm in the in my living room with you. It, it, you can absolutely connect without being physically present. So it's the bodies that we have to keep separate, not the souls and spirits. And you can extend your soul and spirit in all these different ways and do it because it's really good for your immune system. Guess what? to feel connected, and it's bad for your immune system to feel isolated. Yeah. Terry, I've had so much fun with you. We've gone way longer than the usual podcast goes, but that's great. It means we just have to have you on again soon. And I loved laughing with you, and I loved our <laughs> Instapot. And <laughs> oh, God, the Instapot. Yeah, well, it's fun, always fun chatting with you, and I uh, hope you'll invite me back soon because um, it's always a pleasure. I will for sure. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for having me. Okay, that's our show for today. One of my favorite people in the world, Terry Matlin, queensofdistraction.com, uh, or go to addconsults.com. It's Terry Matlin, M-A-T-L-E-N. She is truly uh, just an amazingly wonderful, giving, wise, good, good, good person in so many ways. Well, remember to reach out to us with your questions and show ideas. Our email address is connect at distractionpodcast.com. That's the word connect at distractionpodcast.com. We love getting your questions, your comments, your show ideas. Every now and then we do an entire show devoted to your questions. And uh, if you want to send a voice memo, we'll play your, your actual voice on the show, which is always fun to hear. 
uh, and uh, we, you know, we really depend on your input for our continued growth. Tell your friends about us too, please. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. Our producer is the constantly coming up with new ideas and new thoughts and images and shows, Sarah Gurton. And our recording engineer and editor is the quietly brilliant, but always efficient, Pat Keogh.